Hey, hey everyone. Well, the Super Bowl is officially in the books. There were some exciting plays, some controversial calls, an overhyped halftime show, and in the end, one of the two teams won it all. No, this video totally wasn't shot weeks ago. Why? Why do you ask? It's often been said that most people who watch the big game don't even watch it for the football, but rather the commercials, which is totally passe now anyway, since now all those Super Bowl commercials are leaked online weeks beforehand. But oh yes, thank God for YouTube and their veritable treasure trove of classic commercials, in particular wrestling commercials. Even though you might never see a wrestling themed commercial feature on the big game ever again, it's important to look back at these classics and realize that, yeah, it's probably a good thing. You need a fuel in the bottom protein shot! Well, apparently, Ric Flair's Goku or something now. Teleporting places, leaping incredibly long distances, that sort of thing. Here, the Nature Boy is selling a protein slash energy shot called Fuel in the Bottle. And because this is a Ric Flair commercial, the makers of this ad are required by law to include a woo or two in there. Woo! 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 Fuel in the bottle power shot! It puts the woo in my woo! Because if you're going to take health advice from somebody's grandpa, it might as well be one who can harness the power of teleportation while carrying a big gold belt in his shoulder. Boy, non-fans are going to be confused as hell by this thing. But that isn't the only thing Flair's put his name on recently. Check out these commercials for his special scratch lottery tickets that were sold in North Carolina. Can I get one of those woo tickets? Excuse me? One of those woo tickets. It's not woo, it's... I find it extremely ironic that thousands of North Carolinians would place their financial hopes and dreams in the hands of a man who is world-renowned for his inability to handle money, yet still opened a business called Ric Flair Finance, only in America. If that shot hung on there for three more seconds, Flair would have chopped the shit out of that old lady. But in all seriousness, these Flair-endorsed scratches did great business for the North Carolina Lottery, and they had a couple of versions come out because they were selling so fast. Here's a commercial for the second edition. If you need to brush up on your styling and profiling, Woo! even your knife hand chop, then you might be Woo! university material. I'll bet that Woo University has some amazing courses, like how to bleed, proper robe care, and how to read prenuptial agreement contracts. No wonder, look at this mountain of beer. I've never seen such selection in all my life. Pro Wrestlers and Beer. It's a tag team with a bond stronger than that of the Four Horsemen, the Rock and Roll Express, the Hardy Boys, and the Young Bucks put together, Jack. And over the decades, advertisers have taken advantage of this classic pairing. In the mid-1980s, Chicago Lake Liquors in Minneapolis asked some stars from the AWA, which was based in Minnesota, to endorse their store in a series of commercials. You can get the finest in domestic beer as well as imported beer. You can drink little bottles or drink it like the body does. That's right, folks. Drink beer like Jesse Ventura does. Then you too can have that muscular physique and you can eventually govern the entire state. And I guess Vern Gagne is stiffing the boys on pay because Mad Dog Vashon has resorted to stocking shelves for extra cash. And they told me that this was a, a nasty part-time job. Don't I ever get a coffee break around here? Hey, Chicago Lake, have you seen this guy when he's angry? Give the man his damn coffee break. From what I can tell, only Ventura and Vashon did these ads. I wouldn't be surprised if they had more people involved, but as of now, theirs were the only two I could find. But think of the possibilities of having other AWA wrestlers in these commercials. Sergeant Slaughter could have told you it was your patriotic duty to buy from Shy Like Liquors. Maybe Nick Bockwinkel could have given you a crash course on how beer is made. And the Crusher would have spent 30 seconds just drinking everything in sight. Budweiser presents Real Men of Genius. Budweiser's Real Men of Genius ad campaign was, well, pretty genius. Taking the whole concept of saluting heroes and turning it on its ear, celebrating the more mundane things, punctuated with a very obvious Steve Perry knockoff, was a great way to get some laughs. From bad toupees, to guys who wear too much cologne, to the guy who invented the taco salad, Budweiser covered a broad range of topics with a plum. And of course, the absurdity of wrestling attire ended up in their crosshairs as well. We salute you, Mr. Pro Wrestling Wardrobe Designer. Mr. Pro Wrestling Wardrobe Designer. While lesser designers would shy away from putting 300 pound men in spandex, you embrace it. Yes, you do. This commercial pokes a lot of fun at the way wrestlers dress, but honestly, I can't get mad at them for it. Of course wrestlers dress outlandishly. They have to in order to be remembered. That's part of the appeal of wrestling. Though the ad does teeter a bit on the edge of the whole, dude, wrestling is gay thing. All understated ways of saying, I'm going to rip your head off and look fabulous doing it.
Be that as it may, I can't help but laugh and, dare I say, feel a bit nostalgic for when wrestlers were allowed to dress like this. Obviously, the fringe and the neon are a bit passe these days, but I think there should be more wrestlers out there who try to embrace this loud, colorful period. I mean, get the vaudevillains who represent the 1890s. Why not bridge the gap and have a tag team from the 1990s? Johnny Ace would love it. This place is going our last beer commercial comes from the folks at Miller Lite, who take a, pun intended, lighthearted look at the choreographed nature of wrestling. In this ad, the wrestlers aren't even close to making contact with their moves, but the fans and the announcers still eat it up. This is In a way, this commercial is actually an excellent representation of the fan-industry relationship. Even though most wrestlers are never this bad at connecting, we all know that these guys aren't really in the ring trying to kill each other. Yet despite that knowledge, we go along with it anyway, as long as it's exciting and they keep us emotionally invested. This video game glitch come to life is showing off the social contract of wrestling in a very funny way. But the best part has to be the ending, when the wrestlers have some beers at the bar. Again, another sign these guys aren't really enemies. As they open their beers, they're still several inches away from their target. But in spite of that, the cans open and the beer magically makes its way into their glasses. So, maybe they were connecting in the ring after all. Hmm. Makes you think. Good match there, buddy. Thanks, you too. Now you can turn your backyard into a battleground. Here it is, folks, the one environment in which Rey Mysterio doesn't look overmatched. With accessories like the rapid fire system all at once. I don't care how you do it, there's no way you're going to convince me that a home version of laser tag is either cool or fun. If you're a kid, you have to have rich parents who buy multiple units or be part of a group of kids who all go in together on a set. Then you play it once or twice before you get bored with it, or one of your friend sprains his ankle and he can't play anymore, then your mom says you can't hang out with your friend Brendan because he's a bad influence, and you get so mad you take it out on the furniture, and... What are you looking at? I had a good childhood, damn it! Unleash the warrior inside you. In what I can only assume was a condition of his return to the company in 1996, the WWF pumped out a series of commercials for the Ultimate Warriors Wrestling School in Arizona. Each one of them was full of inspirational imagery and messages. Anyone desperate enough to try and deceive a blind man needs the money more than I. Thank you, our Lord and Savior, Hellwig! From a blind man dishing out life lessons to a wheelchair-bound man finding the strength to work through his disability, these commercials sold you in the idea that going to Warrior University would enrich your life, way better than those namby-pamby actual universities. Any academic institution can help you fulfill prerequisites, but how many can prepare you to fulfill a dream? Talk about the content all you want, but when it comes to straight-up video production, the WWE cannot be beat, so obviously these commercials were very nice to look at. But what were they actually selling you? The commercials for Warrior University sold you an idea, a vision, a way for you to realize your dreams. Not once did they ever tell you it was a wrestling school, and at best, it was vaguely implied. The door to Warrior University could quite possibly lead into the dressing rooms of the WWF superstars. If you weren't paying attention, you'd have no idea what they were advertising. Is it a church? A set of motivational tapes? A cleanse diet? So we know what happens when the WWF produces commercials for Warrior University, but what happens when the man himself tries to sell it to you with no filter and no corporate influence? Okay. This is a Warrior U commercial from 1995, one year before the WWF made their well-produced, much classier versions. It's Warrior at his most Warrior. It's intense and insane, but at least you get the point. The rumor has it, you think you got what it takes to be a pro wrestler. Well, now's the best opportunity you'll ever have. See, the warrior is flat out advertising a wrestling school. That's it. He's not trying to sell inner strength or spiritual wonderment or whatever other bullshit Vince was peddling. It's a wrestling school run by the former Intercontinental and World Champ, The Ultimate Warrior. What more needs to be said? Success in pro wrestling is much more dependent on uniqueness and personality and character. Yeah, toss that bench. Good show of personality and character. If you think you've got what it takes, call Warrior University! But those weren't the only commercials made for Warrior University. One year after his death, his official YouTube channel released a mini-trailer advertising the school. Why they waited until then, I don't know. It's not like he's going to come back and run the thing. And by watching this two-minute masterpiece, you got a real look at how the Warrior helped people achieve their dreams by screaming obscenities at them. You let yourself go so fucking far, you don't have the fucking stamina! To rise up to the challenge! Push yourself so goddamn hard, 
You find out what you're fucking made of! Finish the goddamn job! I'm not sure if his students ever took a bump at Warrior University, or if they ever got booked after training there, but it did seem as if the late Warrior did have a kind heart toward the students. After putting them through a grueling workout, he would buy the students a meal and get to know everyone on a more personal level. Not every wrestling trainer can say they've done that. The Warrior has said and done some crazy stuff, but at least when he said he wanted to make others' lives better, he practiced what he preached. Well, seems kind of odd of me to end this chapter on a positive note, so, um, roll tape? <laughs> ah, good. The ledger is balanced once again. The World Wrestling Federation. Our season never ends. In the early 90s, the WWF wanted to remind you that even though Major League Baseball had gone through a work stoppage, you could always count on good old wrestling. Oh, those wrestlers, they'll never let you down. I don't want your money. This one's personal. After finishing a glass of milk, Yes, because because he's very wholesome. Get it? Yeah, he's drinking milk. Very pure, very wholesome thing. He's not drinking beer or liquor or anything like that. We cannot show this man drinking steroids. I mean alcohol. Diesel appears to go to a location to complete a hit for hire. But in a surprise twist, he's actually meeting up with some young fans to sign autographs. What a swell guy. The World Wrestling Federation. Our athletes still care about their fans. <laughs> Though if you're trying to tease someone possibly pulling off a Mafia-style hit, wouldn't it make more sense to use someone in your company who better fits the bill, like, I don't know, the Hitman? Plus, who in the hell carries 8x10s and Sharpies in a violin case? What is he, an alien? Thanks, Diesel. No. I don't want that. Kevin Nash, turning down money. Okay, that dude's body has definitely been snatched. Here's another Boo Baseball Strike commercial from 1994, this time with Randy Savage, himself a former baseball player before becoming a wrestler. The spot begins with the young boy going out to play ball, but can't because everyone's gone. For the first time in modern history, there will be no World Series this year. Okay, but he's not playing in the World Series, is he? He's just standing out in the field. No one's stopping him from playing ball. You're telling me that kids around the country are so bummed out about the strike they've all lost the collective will to play baseball themselves? Be good. Macho Man? One Federation and its superstars still believe in making dreams come true. That's right, kids. Forget about going outside to play that dumb old baseball. Sit around and get fat watching wrestling. Never leave the house again. Hey, stick around in a couple of decades. You'll be able to watch wrestling on the internet into infinity. Do you guys ever go on strike? No, we never. Because we ain't got a union, Jimmy. Yeah. Art thou bored? Yeah. Step into a Slim Jim. And speaking of the Macho Man, I would be remiss if I didn't wrap this episode up by talking about those iconic Slim Jim commercials. This ad campaign made Savage part of the mainstream more than Hulk Hogan could be after a dozen movies. Want to light up your life? Yeah. Step into a Slim Jim. These commercials hit all the points that good ads are supposed to. They grab your attention by the scrote, they deliver a clear message, and in the end, they wrap it up with the product. Feel a little excitement? Step into a Slim Jim! To this day, Savage is synonymous with Slim Jim, and vice versa. No other wrestler could touch it. Ultimate Warrior? Nope. Bam Bam Bigelow? Nope. Edge? That's creepy. And nope. Do you want to know how intrinsically tied together Macho Man and Slim Jims are? On the day that he died, the snack's only manufacturing plant in the country at that time shut down. For a time, they just couldn't go on. Simply put, these commercials cannot be touched. They are a part of the 90s consciousness. The yelling, the fringe, the explosions. These commercials ought to air forever, like the Christmas commercial for Hershey's Kisses. That's how good they were. Until Savage went to WCW. The rock is extreme. Cause there's nowhere to go. Nowhere to go? When the Macho Man took the Slim Jim endorsement with him to Atlanta, there was a discernible change in the style of the ads. Gone were the fun explosions and old coots and conjures getting theirs. Instead, Savage would teleport rock climbers and snowboarders into a deserted ring and beat the piss out of them, Sting style. Oh. I've got your lip ticket! Falling rock! There's something very unsettling about these scenes. Can we at least add some crowd noise or a soundtrack or something? What do you see? Slim Jim. Slim Jim. And by the end of Macho's run in WCW, suddenly he was hawking the beef jerky sticks out of a mental institution. Beef. Spice. <laughs> <laughs> Stop taking your anti-hallucinogens, oh yeah!
So wait, you're telling me we could get random Scott Hall cameos in those sketches where Ric Flair was in the loony bin, but no walk-ons from Savage? He's already there, and Slim Jim gets a free commercial out of it. Come on, people, quality control! Well, folks, that's it for this commercial retrospective. If you want to see more Hulk Hogan ads, well, you're going to have to wait a while. Because I'm still trying to kill the brain cells that retain the imagery in my head of Hulk Hogan on that wrecking ball with no pants. Oh, God! Thank <laughs> you.